Good day. Today we are going to tackle about combinations. So this is our lesson in our quarter three, module three. So with this lesson, we have a content standard that is based on our budget topic. So the learners, so you as the learner, can demonstrate understanding of the key concepts of the combinatorics and probability and its performance standard is that you can use precise counting techniques and probability in formulating conclusions and making decisions. So for today's topic we have the following objectives. First, you can define and illustrate combination. You can also derive the formula for finding the number of combination of n objects taken r at a time. And lastly, the last objective we have is that you can solve problems involving combinations. Okay. So what is combination? Okay, before we are going to discuss about combination, let us compare this one to our permutation. Permutation is actually a technique in which you will ask to find the number of possible arrangement wherein the order of selection is important for the permutation. While here in combination, we can define combination as a mathematical techniques that determines the number of possible arrangement in a certain collection of items wherein here the order of selection is not important so in combination you can select any items in any order so the difference between combination and permutation is that permutation the order of selection is much important, whereas in combination, the order of selection is not important. Okay, now, so for combination, we have this one as our formula, the C, N, taken, R. Or we can read this one as the combination of N taken, R at a time wherein its formula is equals to the n factorial over the n minus r quantity factorials times the r factorials, wherein the r should be greater than zero, but less than or equal to n. Okay, so... I have here a simple example. Okay, I have here a combination of six taken four at a time. Okay, so with the formula in factorials over n minus quantity factorials times r factorials, this is simply equals to so change n in six is our n. 6 factorials, so n minus r is 6 minus 4 factorials, then copy the r factorials which is 4 factorials. So as you can see here, the highest factorial in the denominator is 4. So therefore, for the 6 factorial, we can expand this one up to 4 factorials only. So why is it we need to expand this one up to 4 factorials so that we can easily what cancel out the four factorials so although it's okay to extend that one up to one but it would be much easier to cancel or to have a shortened expression okay so in this case the six times the six factorials can be expressed as six times five times four factorials what is six minus two that is two so this is two factorials and copy the four factorials we're in four factorials can be cancelled out okay now so what remains is six times five 
and the two factorials is simply equals to 2. So 6 times 5 is equals to 30 divided by 2. Thus, the answer is 15. Okay, so our next example, the combination of 8 taken 5 at a time. So with the formula, our n there is 8. The n minus 1 is 8 minus 5 factorials times 5 factorials. So in here, we can expand 8 factorials up to 5 factorials. So that is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorials. Okay, so now we have expanded the 8 factorials up to 5 factorials. So why is it up to 5 factorials only? So that we can cancel out the 5 factorials at the denominator. Then the 8 minus 5 is actually equals to 3. So now we can cancel out 5. So what remains is 8 times 7 times 6 and the 3 factorials. So what so we have 8 times 7 times 6, and the 3 factorials is simply equals to 6. So we can cancel 6, or we can multiply 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 6. Okay? So if we multiply 8 times 7 times 6, it is 336 divided by 6, and that is equals to 56. Or you can also cancel 6 here. So what remains will be 8 times 7, and 8 times 7 is equals to 56. Okay. So next is. Okay. What about in a problem solving? So, how do we solve combinations applied in a problem solving? Number one. If there are eight teams in a basketball tournament, and each team must play every other team in the eliminations. So how many elimination games will there be? So in this case class, as you can see in the problem, the order of arrangement is not important because A versus B is just the same as B versus A. Or let's say if we have them, okay, the, the team D versus the team A, this is just the same as team A versus the team B. Okay, so as you can see, this is an example of a combination problem wherein the order of arrangement is not important. Okay, so there are eight teams, and in every game, there will be two teams that we are that that going to what compete. So this would be eight taken two. Okay, so it's impossible for a basketball tournament that there are four teams competing each other in one setting so in one game there will be two competitors it's either be team a times versus team b or you can have team b versus team c and so on and so forth so in this case we do have eight teams and two taken at a time why is it two because there are only two teams that will going to compete in every Game. So, 8 taken 2. So, using the formula, the n factorials over the n minus r quantity factorials are factorials. So, substituting the value for n, which is 8, and the 8 minus r factorials is 8 minus 2, while r is 2. So, this is our n here, and this is our r. So, substitute. So, 8 factorials so we will expand expand eight factorials until 
6 factorial. So why is it 6 factorial? Because in here, the 8 minus 2 is 6, and this is 6 factorial. So we are going to expand only the 8 factorials up to 6 factorial. So this would be expressed as 8 times 7 times 6 factorials. Then the 8 minus 2 is 6 factorials times copy the 2 factorials. Okay, so in this case, we can now cancel out 6 factorials. Okay, so what remains is 8 times 7 over 2 factorials, and 2 factorials is simply equals to 2. So 8 times 7 is 56 divided by 2 is 20. Eight. So 56 divided by 2 is 28. There will be what? So in this basketball tourn tournament, there are 28 elimination games. Okay, next example. On a circle, there are 12 selected points. So circles, you'd have 12 selected points. So how many triangles with edges in this point? So if I do have here a circle and there are 12 assigned points in a given circle, so if we are going to connect three points, it will form a triangle. So in forming a triangle, we only need three points because triangles has three vertices so with these 12 points i only need three so 12 taken three okay so next is that with the use of our formula here so we will substitute all the values of n as well as the r so we do have 12 factorials over n minus r, that is 12 minus 3 factorials and 3 times 3 factorials. So now, okay, how are we going to expand our 12 factorials? So that is up to 3 or up to what? So we are going to base the expansion of these 12 factorials in this 12 minus 3. What is 12 minus 3? So 12 minus 3 is 9. Okay, so we will exp expand 12 factorials up to its 9 factorial. So this is 12, 11 times 10 times 9 factorials. Then you have 12 minus 3 is 9, that is 9 factorials, times copy the 3 factorials. We're in here, we can now cancel the 9 factorials. So what remains is 12 times 11 times 10 and the three factorials is simply equals to 6 okay so what is 12 times 11 times 10 that is 1320 so divided by 6 voila it is equal to 220 so there are 220 triangles if we are going to okay draw a triangle from a given 12 points in a in a circle okay so next okay so let's proceed to our third example okay for the third example if there are four distinct points on a plane with no three of which are collinear. So how many different polygons can be possibly made? Okay, so take note that there are no three of which are collinear. So no three of which are collinear means there are no three points that is found in a single line. So that means we can make use of three points in forming a polygon. So with the four distinct points that we have, if we are going to make use of four points, definitely we can make a quadrilateral, and that is possible. What about making use of three points? 
So making use of three points, we can form a triangle and it is still possible. What about making a pentagon? Is that possible in this given problem? When I, okay, as I said, it is not possible. So it is not possible since we are only given four distinct points and in making a pentagon, we need five points. What about two points? Using the two points, it will form a line. And a line is not a polygon. So in this problem, we can only make use of equilateral and a triangle. So we can only form quadrilaterals and a triangle. Okay, so for the triangles, we will make use of three points out of the four. So that is four taken three. So with the formula that we have, we will simply substitute the value for the n and the r. So we come up with the n factorials is 4 factorials, the n minus r that is 4 minus 3, while the r is 3. So in this case, we can only expand 4 factorials up to the 3 factorials. That is the shortest and the easiest way for us to expand the four factorials since we can cancel out the three factorials. So we have now four, the four factorials is four times three factorials and the denominator is four minus three, that is one factorial, then copy the three factorials. So we will cancel out the three factorials and it will give us four over one. And what is 4 over 1? That is 4. So with the 4 points that we have, we can make three, uh, 4 triangles out of 4 distinct points. What about quadrilateral? For quadrilateral, from the given 4 distinct points, so we are going to make use of all the points. So with the formula, we will substitute the value for the n and the r. The n is 4 factorial, the 4, so n factorials is 4 factorials, and the n minus r factorials is 4 minus 4 quantity factorials, then r factorials is 4 factorials. So the, there's no need for us to expand the 4 factorials since we can cancel out directly the 4 factorials. And for the 4 minus 4 factorials, that is equals to 0. And what is 0 factorials? 0 factorials is actually equals to 1. So this will be expressed as 1 over 1. And what is 1 over 1? 1 over 1 is equals to 1. So now let's go back to the question. How many different polygons can be possibly made? There are four triangles and one quadrilateral. So that means we can make five different polygons. Okay. So now it's your turn. Okay, in this activity, so for the quarter three, module three, I want you to answer activity number four. So for activity number four, you are given 10 minutes to answer. So you are going to find the value of the combination of 11 taken five the 7 taken 3, the value of n where the combination answer is 35 and the value of r where the combination is 120 and the value of n in which the answer is 78. So you'll be given only 10 minutes to answer this activity. So I want you to post this one for 10 minutes and answer this one. 
If you already have the answers, so I want you to submit your activity via the link that I'm going to give you after this class. And as well as answer also activity number five. So for activity five, you will only identify whether the given situation here is a combination or a permutation. So you are going to write C if it is a combination and P if it is a permutation. Okay? So and then for tomorrow you will answer activity number six, the problem solving. Okay, so I'll be posting the link for submission for activity number six by tomorrow so if there are questions or clarifications so please don't hesitate to ask me in our group chat okay oh thank you and god bless us all